Hello. Let's now do a pretty cool, um, let's do a pretty cool problem here. Let's look at how I can show simultaneously a function like the ln of x, right? The ln of x, right? I know I can expand that into the following function, right? Uh, using the Taylor series. It's something like this, x minus one squared plus dot, dot, dot. Now I can do the Taylor series myself in order to find it, right? Or I could do a quick Google search of the Taylor series, right? And I can get a nice, nice expression for it, right? Just right here. So, you know, I mean, a lot of these things are worked out already, right? And so that's what we're kind of picking out a nice, uh, simple example. And so basically what we do is we can get this into a function that looks kind of like this, where I have, I now have my y of x. It's going to be equal to the sum of n, a n, and then something like x to the n. Since we're expanding at about x minus 1, it's actually x minus 1 to the n power, right? And then we got to sum it all up and get every single term for it to be a perfect overlap to the ln of x, right? So I, I don't know off the top of my head how to do that, uh, how to sum up infinite number of terms, but I do know how to sum up nine or so. So let's kind of develop an algorithm so where we can, um, you know, get a couple of uh, a couple of these different terms and look at how well uh, having certain certain terms in the function will actually match the real function. So let's do that. Let's clear this, close. And I'm just going to go ahead and comment these. I'm going to comment these lines out here. Um, we'll talk about them in a moment. I'm just going to run this, right? And um, for some unknown reason in MATLAB, they call the log of ln, they call it the log, which is super confusing, right? And so this is what the plot looks like, dragging it over, right? So I have my x, I go from one to two, and then my y is just the ln of um, the ln of y as I go from one to, one to two, right? It's this nice curvy function. It's almost a line, kind of curvy, kind of different. All right. Now, what is it going to be if I write it out in terms of an expanded series, right? So, uh, so let's take a look and see what um, what's going to happen there. So, what I want to do is I want to figure out another way of writing, uh, of, of like doing this calculation over here, right? I want to do this calculation, but I don't want to. I don't want to have to redo it every time I do it. So I just want to have one thing that I know works, right? So I'm going to do that by creating something called a function, right? And the easiest way to do this is when you go into new up here, you just do new function, right? And it generates a, a nice template for you. You got to make sure that whatever you name your function here is the same as the file name. So if I name it like my function, Right. Then when you save the file, it's going to be called myfunction.m. And it's really that's like the real like thing you got to catch. All right. So I'm I've already built one. So let's take a look at what I built. All right. So now you'll notice that I wrote a lot more text in my notes. Right. Notice I gave an input and an output. So I told the user. Hey, if you input in these valuable, these variables into this function, this is what you're going to get out of it. Notice I said, okay, if you take in a value of X, it can be an array or single valued. It's going to do some calculations. It's going to find what the LN of X is right to the nth order. Right. And then it's going to spit it out and Y. So let's see how the calculation is done. The first step is in line 13. This is the declaration of the function. This tells MATLAB, yo, there's a function. It's called the ln term expander. Now, if you look, my file is also called the ln term expander.m, right? I can't spell, so who knows? 
Uh, all right, so it takes in an X and it takes in an N and it gives out a Y. All right, so that's the notation. Now, there are every programming language kind of does this a little bit differently. Uh, sometimes you return values, like if you're using Java or C. Um, Visual Basic and um, MATLAB, you know, they have this way of you just like, you declare the return thing at the top and you just, um, every time you, uh, you know, whatever it is, whatever the state that Y is when you're done with the program is what gets returned. So if I define it here, whatever Y is when I'm done with executing the code from line 13 to line 23, is going to be what y returns to to the user now i'm not asking you guys to be super genius function users i just want to expose this to you right so you've seen it all right so the first step i'm going to do is in line 15 i'm going to make sure that x and y are the same size right so i'm going to start by taking my x and i'm going to ask matlab what size is x right so if it's an array of n elements, right, then y will be an array of n elements. And I set all the values of y equal to zero, right? So I call the zeros function. Zeros or ones are good, good bets. All right, so, but I also start with zero because I have a sum here, right? I have a sum. And uh, whenever I have a sum, I'm going to be adding things to it. So the the first thing I'm going to have before I add anything to it is zero, right? So starting things at zero is usually a good bet when you have a sum because you're just going to keep adding to it. So the first time around, you have nothing in there, right? So then you're going to add the first element. Then you're going to add the second element and so on. All right. So if I look at this, if I remember, we're going to write the ln of x in terms of, I don't know where's my x, in terms of the sum of a i right i equal one to big n right and then it's going to be x minus one to the ith power right that's what the expansion is right here so i wanted to calculate what a i is right and it's just all the non x terms here right so that's what i did in line 18 right line 17 this is where I do my summation, right? I start at i equal to one here, right? Right here. And I'm going until n, my, to get to the nth value. To the nth value. Right, okay, so. All right, so in line 18, I calculate the value of AI, right? It's minus one to the N minus one or I minus one power, and it's divided by I. Cool. All right, and then I just do in the next line here, I take my AI times X minus one. Now I gotta remember I include the dot because I'm gonna be taking I'm going to be taking powers of something that um, is an array, right? Because remember, X can be an array. Got to be careful there. That's why I have that dot in there, right? And then I'm going to add it to the value of Y from the last number, right? I'm just going to keep adding it to Y, and it's going to keep getting closer and closer and closer to the actual value of the element of X. Let's run it. So once I've got this declared like this, I go back to my original function right, my in tester, and now I can call it. Now, here's the great thing. I can put in whatever I want into these values. I don't care. I don't care now. Um, I don't care what numbers I put in. I can put in any number there. It's going to calculate it for me. So that's the great thing about using a functions. I add a layer of abstraction. And now I can just ask for whatever value I want, right? So it's, it's a pretty cool tool. So I run this, I have, I get it for n equal one, n equal three, and n equal nine, right? That's the number of terms I've taken in the expansion. And then I plotted all of them. The, the worst one is green, dash dash green lines, 
The next worst one is dash dash red lines. The best one I have is dash dash blue lines, right? And I made it dark blue, right? And the actual function is black. So let's take a look at what it looks like. And so you can see that the blue actually does a pretty good job, right? It's not perfect. As it gets up around 1.9 or something, you start to see some deviations. But, you know, the green one or the red one isn't as good. So if I went ahead and put in a higher order, even higher order, it's going to get even better. So let's just make this 18 and see what happens. Right now I run this. And now you see it's almost perfect except for there's a little rounding off right here right so then i could say well why don't i make that 180 right and run that right and now you'll look that there's a perfect overlap between the blue and the black line pretty cool